What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Railroads Online and today we're checking out the new Christmas update as it's called. It adds snow and a snow plow which is exciting as well as a 280 cook mogul which isn't this. This is still the 240 Montezuma. I actually don't have the money to buy the 280. We can take a look at it in the locomotives menu. Uh, and of course, we can check out the snow plow, which is exciting. So I do want to buy a snow plow for 600 bucks. Apparently, the snow plow gives your train a boost of speed. So we're going to test that today and see if that's actually the case. And as well, they've apparently removed some of the speed limits or increased some of the speed limits on some of the locomotives. I was just driving the Montezuma around. It doesn't feel like it's got a speed limit change, but apparently there are some that do. But the snow plow apparently gives you some speed. I don't know. I haven't checked it. No idea. We're going to hook it up and do a little bit of an experiment to see how much faster we can go with a snow plow on the front of our train. Uh, interestingly enough, this is a wedge plow. Uh, you know, that's about all I know about it. It's a wedge plow. I've been to a few railroad museums where they have those wedge plow locomotives, where it's like a locomotive with a built-in wedge plow that goes off in both directions. There's actually one museum that has that pretty close to where my parents live. And uh, I have seen some wedge plows. I think more people are probably common with the rotary plow, which is like the big snowblower you see on the front of a steam locomotive. I have no idea what this tank is for on a wedge plow. Um, I know with the like big rotary plows, they have a whole steam engine that's powering the rotary plow, obviously. I feel like this tank is probably for some sort of a ballast or counterweight. That would be my guess to keep the plow on the tracks. You want it to be as heavy as possible. But, uh, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if you know... Uh, what those are for. I'm not really like a huge expert on plows, to be honest. I mean, I live in Canada. I shovel a lot of snow, but uh, yeah, not not so much plows. Um, I don't really know what to number this. It, it doesn't really. Why? Like, does it does it need? I don't think it needs a number. It's a plow. Like, it's it's a piece of utility. Uh, it's clearly going to be called Plowy Mick Plow. Oh God. Okay. Okay. Apparently, I can't fit that, Mister Plow. Um. That's it's see. I am plow. Okay, there we go. That's that's it's kind of like Groot. We're gonna give it the number zero. Um, that seems cool. And apparently there's colors. That's right. Let's check red, black. Ooh, I like the black. Ooh, the black with the wood though. This looks like a, it. Honestly, kind of looks like a skateboard ramp gone wrong. I'm very used to the plows that are like split right down the middle and go off in both directions. I mean, this is pretty cool. I like. I kind of like that better than the black on black. Black on black. Oh, this is metal, though. That looks much more industrial. All right, of course, our engine's the wrong way. We're just gonna... I'm just gonna re-rail the plow and flip it around. I mean, there's not much to it. Supposedly, we'll go faster. So my plan is this. It's really simple. I've set up the switches at the sawmill to go around, and I know exactly, you know, what direction they're gonna go. So we should be able to just go full reg from the freight depot, time how long it takes us to get to the sawmill and back, and then disconnect the plow... And, uh, you know, do it without the plow and see if it's the same amount of time. Can I rerail this? Is it gonna... No? Okay, there we go. Perfect. So that's my plan. We're gonna go from the freight depot to the sawmill. Just do a quick loop around the sawmill and come back at max speed. I'm gonna time it and then we're gonna do it again without the plow. And we're gonna see how big of a speed boost the plow gives. Because, I mean, realistically, we could have a plow on every train if it's that much of a speed boost. Uh, I mean, at least while the winter's on anyway. But normally plows were like super heavy. You'd see these like maintenance trains and they'd go with just three or four steam engines. Maybe they'd have a caboose and then they'd have just a giant rotary snow plow on the front or even a, a giant wedge plow. And that was like their whole job was just clearing the track, right? Like it, it, I don't think we're going to put plows on the front of actual freight trains. Um, but either way, let's get this thing hooked up. I'm curious how much the speed difference is. I really, are, are there, oh, there's no brakes. Oh, interesting. The plow does not have brakes. I guess that makes sense. Why would it need brakes? That is actually kind of hilarious. Oh, look, there's a little little snow effect, too. Um, well, we'll let that bonk. While we're doing that, uh, might as well take a look at the 280 Cook. Obviously, we can't afford it, uh, but they did add it. So we've got the Montezuma, the Eureka, the Glenbrook, um, which we're kind of filming this episode out of order. We sort of have a Glenbrook, but if you see it in the yard, just don't, don't, just ignore it. It's, we'll talk about it next episode. Uh, we got a Climax, a Heisler, and the Shea, and the Mosca. Oh my god, that thing looks amazing. 280, we gotta get that. And the Cook 260, and the Cook 280. Wow, that also looks amazing. Look at that freaking wood pile. Oh my god. That's a beautiful engine. Ooh, I like that so much better. The, like, this, this looks like 
you know, industrialized. This looks more passenger train done up to look pretty. What? I don't understand what changed there. What's, what's the difference between paint? Oh, black drivers instead of white drivers. That looks sick. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, I don't feel... I don't feel like this is how this would have been done. I feel like if you were going to have a plow train back in the day, you'd probably, like, remove this and make... Like, I feel like this push bar would just snap. You're trying to push a 13,000 plow plus all the snow. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not really an expert on how these things were set up. But, yeah, that does not... That does not seem safe. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go full reverse. We're gonna get ourselves back on the freight depot. We'll line up with the freight depot, and then we'll just gun it, basically. Give ourselves full fuel, hammer it at full throttle, and see, uh, you know, how long it takes us to do a loop around the sawmill and come back. Hopefully we don't bin it. I don't think, like, we will. And then uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll disconnect the plow and try it again and see if the time is any difference. I mean, this isn't a very far route. We're only going to the sawmill and back. It's a very short, you know, distance. But I think if there's a significant enough speed difference with these plows, um, you know, we should see it even in that short of a distance, even if it's like only five or 10 seconds. I'm hoping it gets as much as 30 seconds, but I don't know. All right, I think this is lined up enough. The front of the plow is lined up with the front of the freight depot. I'm gonna pull up a timer. And what we're going to do is count down, go full speed, and when we get back to clearing through the freight depot, we should end up coming back in the wrong way. So we're going to leave this way, uh, and because it's going to flick that switch, it's going to end up coming back in through the same switch. So we're going to come back, you know, in the wrong direction that we are now, but it doesn't matter. And we'll, we'll count it as completed once we completely pass through the freight depot in the wrong direction. So here we go. In three... Oh wait, I got to, I'll take the break off. In three, two, one, go. All right, we're off. This is a very, very excitingly slow start. Um, hopefully the water weight doesn't affect this too much. Obviously the longer we go, the more water we're gonna lose. I don't know how much of a factor that'll actually be. Um, and then of course, I'm just gonna keep it fully fueled the whole time, but I don't think the fuel weight is significant either. Uh, I, I, I really don't know. I'm pretty sure water weight is calculated in this game. Oh my god, that is a really tall, tall plume of snow. We are just, I love how we're just sucking snow. It's like a vacuum. It's sucking the snow off the track. It really would be cool if this game, I mean this game, oh, but we lost the snow. We have no more. Oh, no, that's back. Oh, no, it's at this specific angle there's no snow. But then here, it, we are shaking. Oh my goodness, that plow is actually shaking. But yeah, it would be interesting this game if they actually had maintenance things you had to do, like clear tracks, you know, take care of engines. I know Heist and I have talked about it before, um, and apparently, like Heist was saying in previous episodes, the predecessor to this game, the American Railroads, as it's called, it had maintenance on engines and maintenance on cars and stuff, and you had to, like, park them or whatever. And I think that would be, like, really cool in this, especially in the winter, having to actually use these plows to clear your tracks would be awesome. Uh, that would be a really, a really cool thing. I mean, I don't really know. I don't, I can't tell if this is giving us any sort of a speed boost. We're, like, we're just gonna drive it. I mean, the, the nice thing is the math should kind of balance itself out over a longer distance. It says in the update notes that the snowplow gives you a little bit of a speed buff. So, I don't know, but we're also pushing weight, whereas without the snowplow, we're not pushing the weight. So... Is it enough of a speed buff just to overcome the fact that you're pushing 13,000 pounds? Or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Maybe this only works with the bigger engines. We need a, a more powerful train to actually see the effect of it. Interesting, there is no snow effect at this one specific angle. Looks cool, though. I don't know. Maybe it's just because Montezuma has, has little itty-bitty drivers. We're already at the max speed. But no, because I'm pretty sure Heist was saying the Montezuma, like, the max speed normally in this game is 18 miles an hour or something like that. 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, but I'm pretty sure Heist was saying the Montezuma should be able to do, like, 25, 30. So, even with the drivers it's got. So, I don't think we're, we're close to the max speed. I don't know. We're shaking on these corners, though. The plow really, really does not like to stay on the corner. We're into the sawmill three minutes-ish. Three and a bit. I, I feel like it's going to be so much faster without uh, 
without this. We're gonna... Let me think here. When we come back the other way, and we do this a second time, we're gonna come in from the opposite, like, end of the loop. But we should end up running the exact same distance of track, so it won't matter. But we will come in the other direction. Yeah, I mean, this this sawmill's... It's pretty good. Or not sawmill, the snowplow. Yeah, it shakes. Look at that corner. Oh my goodness. Oof. Ooh, ooh, that's a spicy corner. That is, that is a spicy corner. This really should be a straight line load, but anyway. All right, coming on out. This is actually a wicked cool plow, though. I just hope there's there's reasons for this. I'd love to have mate. Um. Okay, let's uh, let's just let's just pause the timer there for a sec. Does the plow not work? with does the, does the plow not work with cross pieces is that a thing did it like it hit the cross piece and died uh oh we're gonna back up and i'm gonna re-rail this and then get some speed and run at this again and then that way the uh the time should hopefully work out here we go plow don't don't screw up this time please I just need to make it through this cross piece. If not, we'll have to just start it afterwards, but then the time is going to be not as accurate. I don't know. I'm hoping it just shook. It, you know, it's come around the corner. This thing does like to shake on the corners. Maybe it just shook at the wrong time and, like, clipped the inside edge of that track. All right, here we go. Going to resume the time. And go. All right. You know what? That's close enough. Weird. Weird. Hopefully it doesn't screw up on this cross piece either. It must have just been shaking. I mean, look at how much it's shaking right now. It definitely is not... Okay, made it through that one. That's That was so sketchy. That was the weirdest thing. I don't think this is... Uh, maybe with Montezuma, maybe it's just Montezuma's got a top speed problem. But I don't think this plow really increases the top speed all that much. But I, I, again, this could be because Montezuma's already at its own top speed. Although I could have sworn Heist was saying that Montezuma can go a lot faster than the game's top speed limit. It is really, it, it really is an itty bitty engine though. It, it's kind of funny how tiny Montezuma is. Uh, can we just, oh, oh, okay, oh no, okay. Oof, almost lost the train. Hold on, I'm trying to get, I just want to get up on the plow. There we go. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay, at, apparently at this angle there's no snow. Now you just you can't see anything. It's great. It's great. We're clearing the tracks with my face. It's it's awesome. Okay, there we go. We'll just oh oh a little bit little bit of snow a little bit of snow a little bit of snow lots of snow no snow. Wonderful. This is going to be a very, very solid experiment with uh, no issues whatsoever. Definitely going to give us accurate results, and uh, shouldn't be shouldn't be any problem to uh, any. What, what is it? Peer review. Shouldn't have any issues with peer review of this experiment. I know I'm going to get a lot of people in the comments who know all the specifics about this update, who are going to tell me all the information, and then the next video when we talk about it. We'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be a, bit, a little bit more informed. I read all the update notes, but uh, I know there's people who have, like, you know, inside scoops on things, and I just, I just don't, so. Wow, look at that, look at that plume coming off, that's awesome. Look at that. Crazy, the speed of that snow getting launched. This thing, I, maybe it is faster, look at the plow shaking around the corner, or maybe it's just the plow. The plow really does like to shake. That's cool. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. It, it was the, definitely the best use of $600 that I could possibly think of. All right, here we go. We're coming in full speed. I'm getting ready to stop the timer. I'm at about eight minutes-ish. Uh, I'm going to have a timer on the screen, which is going to be more accurate because that's going to be synced to the video. But I'm also timing it on my phone. Just, you know, all those good old 1900s things. But uh, here we go. I'm going to stop it as soon as we clear through the station. And... Stop. Alright, so like 8.20-ish. I don't know. We'll have a more exact time. But, you know, that should be a good enough... A good enough check. I'm just going to go full break. 
Uh, let me see here. We actually have to... I'm just going to move you for now. We're just going to re-rail you out of the way here, Mr. Plow. Thank you. Yeah, we'll just put you over there. Perfect. You don't even have brakes. Like, just ridiculous. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll pull Montezuma through and then flip it around by just going through the switch here and backing through the route we just came. And then that way we'll be facing in the same direction we were going the first time, except without the plow. So uh, two seconds and then we'll be racing Montezuma on its own. All right, here we go. Montezuma, test two. Uh, we're good to go. We've got fuel, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like it's probably faster with the plow. Just backing up here, the chugs felt less, less quick. But, oh, whoops, I didn't want, I didn't want to do that. I guess the, the regulator isn't up. You know what, that's gonna be close enough. Doesn't matter. We're, gonna, we're off by, like, two feet. All right, here we go. In three, two, one, go. All right, Montezuma. Definitely accelerates faster without 13,000 pounds on the front. Put some put some logs in because might as well just fill that right up to 100 percent all right i picked the most riveting engine to do this test with i probably should have used the glenbrook but uh, of course we haven't actually released the glenbrook video yet it'll be the video after everything's out of sequence guys don't worry about it we're like so far ahead in railroads actually the glenbrook is the last video in the fall so you can just pretend that the snow melted and then it snowed again afterwards like it snowed right now and then it melted because it got warm and then it snowed again it happens a lot actually where i live where it just kind of snows melt snows melt so you know just 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 uh yeah that's what's happening right now um ignore the fact that there's a glenbrook park right there and we're just gonna we're just gonna drive by uh, we're gonna look this way so you just don't see it you know, just for continuity purposes, um, you know, we really, Heist and I, we're trying to, we're trying to be as continuous, con continuous, con I guess it would be continuous, but like continuity, like we, you'd say it's continuous, probably, like the most continu- anyway, we're just trying to be, you know, consistent between episode- oh, there's- oh, that's not an engine, that's not- that's not a thing. Right, um, so we're just gonna look this way now. I love the winter in this game it feels great i i really wish there was maintenance though like snow on the tracks you got the snow plows just make it so the tracks slowly accumulate with snow and we have to clear them off that would be amazing and if you don't clear them off your trains go slower and have more slip that would be how i would play it and it would be just great and you could have people running around with maintenance trains i mean i know that it was like Heist was saying, you know, the other game had maintenance and stuff, so I'm sure it's a thing. There's engine sheds and stuff, so there's definitely a reason for it, but the little details like that. Because right now, I mean, Montezuma, poor Montezuma, we've run it so much, it probably needs, you know, a good three, four days of maintenance. And, uh, yeah, it just hasn't, hasn't had any shed time at all since we bought it. It's just been sitting in a yard and pretty much constantly running for, like, weeks on end, so... Feel, I feel bad, but yeah, it would be cool if engines had performance and, you know, it slowly decreased over time as the maintenance got worse and eventually it got to the point where that they wouldn't run properly. Uh, you know, I don't really care to have engines blowing up or anything like that, but have them, like, reducing their power output, basically, and reducing their top speed as they get wor more worn would be kind of cool. And then just parking them in an engine shed for, you know, a certain amount of time for them to get their performance back, that would be great. I'd, I'd love to see that. I think you'd have to have a cutoff, though. Like, as long as it's got 90% maintenance, for example, it still has its top speed. Like, I wouldn't do it on a perfectly scaling thing, because then you'd only have your top speed for a fraction of a second when you're at 100% maintenance, and that would suck, right? You'd want to be able to, you know, pull a load for an entire trip without it just breaking down on you. So, it would be nice if there was definitely a window. Like, once it falls below 90 or 80%, then you start to see performance hits. Um, but I honestly, I don't know, I've never seen, I've never played the American Railroads game, so I'd have to really check that out to see how they did maintenance in that one before I could really comment. Uh, but either way, this is, this is going okay. I don't really think we're any faster or slower. Like, it took us 8 minutes and 20 on the last one to do the whole round trip back to the freight depot. And we're just like kind of pulling into the sawmill now. And I've got like 340-ish. Now we are going the other way this time. We'll come back out on the same, like it'll all work out. It's the same distance. We're running the same track, just in reverse. But I feel like, if I, I haven't had the brake on, right? No, okay, good. That would have been stupid, have the tender brake on this whole time. But yeah, I feel like we're we're honestly gonna end up with like the same time. 
or similar enough. I don't know how much of a difference the plow makes. Now again, I am using the Montezuma. It might be because I, I need a bigger engine, like a, you know, a, a class 48 or something, or, you know, maybe even a, uh, the 280 Cook, something like that. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. It seems kind of weird that it doesn't, it does, it's not a significant difference yet. I mean, who knows? We haven't even got back to the Freight Depot yet. Maybe there's, uh, you know, maybe there's some miracle that's going to happen here. We also did have that derailing moment, so the timing might not be perfectly accurate. Although I did try to get up to speed before we resumed the clock, so it should be close. This corner, that is a spicy corner, my goodness. That, that corner, yikes, that is, yeah, I feel like that one's more than 50 degrees. I might have to come back and rework that a little bit, see if I can make it any shallower. I like this sawmill layout, but uh, yeah, making loops in this game with the way the industries are placed. There's a lot of big flat areas, but then where all the industries are, they're very confined. So you really have to, you know, ideally do them the way we did the smelter, which is just a proper shunt yard. You do a lot of micromanaging of cars and train movements, but it seems to be the way they want you to organize industries in this game. Although, you know, I understand the Unreal Engine. If we could terraform though, that would, I mean, people would do ridiculous things like level mountains and all sorts of stuff, but it would be really cool to, you know, have some tunnels or terraform some areas around industries just to, you know, do different layouts, right? We're coming back now. I, I don't think this is going to be any slower, honestly. I feel like the Montezuma, at least for it, the plow is the, it's the same speed. Maybe the plow speed difference is offset by the fact that the plow is heavy, but it doesn't seem like we are any faster. I mean, who knows? I, I just hit six minutes. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's crazy how long it takes just to do a round trip to the sawmill and back without loading. That's insane. It always seems a lot shorter when you're riding the train itself, but I guess not. I mean, it's, you know, it is a fair distance. It's like a quarter of the map, really. Crazy. Crazy to think about. I think on this, once Heist and I actually build up the whole map and have all the industries I think at some point I want to do a line around the whole map like actually have a train line that runs like the edges of these mountains goes somehow over this mountain I don't even know how you do that and then come back down here the edge here like runs the whole edge of the map up over here around this like that would be so cool to have like a really really high train up in the mountains just to have it just to run it once and then you know see how long it takes to actually do the whole thing that'd be really cool Oh, well, we got a minute, a minute and 20, seven minutes. I, we got a minute 20 to get back past the freight depot. I think this is going to be the same speed. Or like marginally different. 10 seconds maybe. Not worth pushing 13,000 pounds, especially if you're trying to go up a hill or something. Um, you know, that's a lot of extra tractive effort you need just for one, one plow. I don't know if the speed difference is enough. Maybe, again, other engines. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have played around with it more. I still think it's really cool that they have the plow, and I'd love to see more maintenance vehicles, maintenance cars. Heist and I were talking about the other day, a firewood car would be sick. You know, a firewood car so you could transport wood from, like, one train to another and have, like, a little car and stuff. And, uh, you know, things like that would be really, really cool. But, actually, this is gonna be slower. Dang, this is actually gonna be slower by, like, the slightest little bit. We're at 750-ish now. Uh, yeah, no, this is, this is actually, it was 820 when we crossed. We have 20 seconds now to get across the freight deep, but wow. It's actually slower, probably by like, this is probably gonna be like 20, 30 seconds slower. Interesting, so over an even longer distance, that would, that would make more of a difference. But again, it's whether or not the 13,000 pounds attractive effort is worth it, depending on how loaded your train is. Oh, that's so cool. We're actually, there's 820 right there. That's what I, I got 820. So we're actually going to be like 20, 30 seconds slower. I mean, not much, but you know, the distance from there, that's awesome. Holy cow. I really, I really can't wait for them to remove speed limits in this game and just let you be as ridiculous as possible. You know, it's going to be a really exciting time to drive trains on the absolute limit of what your, your track can handle and what the load can handle. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a lot more derailments. But we're going to get goods there a lot faster, which would be super cool. So we got to clear the sawmill, or clear the freight depot. Here we go. I'm at like almost nine minutes now. Wow, it's almost a minute slower. And there we go. Time. Yeah, 9.01-ish. 9.02. Interesting. So basically, almost a whole minute. 40 seconds. 40 seconds slower over that distance. So over a bigger distance, 
that would be even crazier. But uh, there you have it. Winter update. Winter is here in Railroads. Like I said, the snow is going to melt in the next couple days. Uh, but then it'll come back in full force and we'll be good to go playing with the Glenbrook and all sorts of fun stuff. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Of course, let me know what you think of Railroads Online. Absolutely love the fact that we're playing it again. And uh, it's always nice to play with Heist. It's really fun and he's a super chill guy. So make sure you check him out as well. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.